This is my most favourite building in the world. Sydney Opera House. How do you feel about it? I like it as good. Tonight is one of the biggest nights of our life. We are so excited because Laser Beak Man, it's opening night. It'd be nice if you could go right to the top and have a look at it. Tim's dreams are always big. And in this country, there is nothing bigger or better in Tim's mind than the Sydney Opera House. Hello, how are you? <laughs> but to actually be in it with Tim's creation is more than we ever, ever dreamt of. Oh, hello, everyone. Hi, John. Yeah, Excited as I think. Tim's an amazing artist, and his characters, they're vibrant and they're real to us, yeah. I feel like each of the characters sort of is a different facet of Tim. <laughs> I am playing Black Sheep. I say things like, ah, where's your beak, man? Hello! <laughs> I laugh at the Black Sheep because he's always funny. I'm down here. <laughs> That's one of the best things, seeing Tim in his moment doing his thing. <laughs> the thing that inspires me is that he's proved everyone wrong. Maybe more of the black lines like you have on your drawings, hey? Yeah, my drawings, that's the one. I was talking about Tim recently and somebody said something like, oh, not all kids can be as talented as Tim Sharp. It's a highly unrelatable story. So there's a little... And I was like, you're missing the part of the story. It's about this kid from the suburbs who had autism, who learned how to do something and he had a mother support him a thousand percent and take this thing on the road and it to become what it's become. It's, it's the story of how they got there. We will be opening the doors in 30 minutes. Thank you. 30 minutes to... Wow, well, 30 minutes. 30 minutes, Nick, only an hour to go. I couldn't have predicted this, no, no. I guess partly because I know where they came from. I am real. I feel really, really nervous tonight. This is the biggest moment. Are you nervous? No, I'm fine. To me, it just shows what can be achieved when someone like Judy has the drive and the commitment and seizes opportunities. It, yeah, just how far you can go. Hello. Oh, hello, yes, please. Oh, yeah, thank you. Have a good evening. The Sharps are the three of us. Okay, Tim has some more shirts. Wow. I'm Judy the mum, my eldest son is Tim, and my other son is Sam. I think it's uh, perfect for this self-isolation, sure, really. don't you? I was a single mother and I had a child with a disability and we didn't meet any other people like that. What do you think about the self-isolation, Tim? It's okay. It's one of the hardest parts of autism for me to deal with the isolation and the loneliness. Do you like the colour? Yeah, I love the colour. It's yellow. yellow. It's hard sometimes to reconcile this idea of Judy being at home, alone, isolated in the suburbs, trying to work out what autism's going to mean for her boy, nice. to the Judy we see now, yeah. who's so strong. Oh, cool. Life just keeps throwing grenades at her and Jude keeps throwing them back. I enjoy your company too. Oh, that's nice, thank you. You're welcome. You're a bit stuck with me as well. So. I like it here. You do? Her main goal has always been Tim, and she was unrelenting and always has been, and, and she's a juggernaut behind the two of them, and, and it's amazing to watch. The day Tim was born was the happiest day of my life, but it only took a few days and things started to change. I thought there was something wrong, but I didn't think it was too much. I actually blamed myself. The first time mother, I thought I didn't know what I was doing. I had a little boy who was distressed all the time and had trouble with all the basics of life. Couldn't communicate what he wanted. We live next door to a little girl who was born six weeks earlier, so they're exactly the same age, and she's running around the yard yelling at an encyclopedia, and Tim's just saying, beep, beep. So we went to see a specialist. And that was the first time autism was indicated. And that was the worst day of my life. Who's this? She was told to, to basically put him away in an institution, and that was one thing she would never even dream of. But I still can't believe that he could sit there opposite me and tell me to put a three-year-old child 
away that he, and tell me that he would never talk, never go to school, never learn anything. He said, uh, Tim never had a feeling for me that he only used me as a tool to get what he wanted. Uh... I knew that there was a beautiful, loving little person in there, was interested in the world around him, would pick up a little flower and look at it and see beauty in it. Then we started, all the hard work started. Judy's marriage split up about 12 years ago and her and Tim and Sam have been on their own ever since. So she's, ha she's had a struggle, definitely. How old was I in 1995? You were 40, 36. 36, how old were you? Seven. Seven, what happened that year? I started in year seven, year two. Year two, you did, at St Brendan's Primary School. Uh -huh. You did lots of things that year. Yeah, I did. Sports carnival. I was running. Oh, <laughs> you were. You were fast. You got a ribbon? Mm -hmm. All the kids were cheering for you. They did. Could you hear them? Yes. Did that make you go a bit faster? Yes. Yeah. I didn't think he was going to make it through school because he just was so, um, I don't know, into himself. I just thought, um, this isn't going to work. You know, what are they going to do with this boy? Inking. That's when he started to draw. But he's always liked superheroes since he was a little boy. He loves the idea of people being able to transform and do things that you can't normally do. He wanted his own superhero to do the things that he wants. Don't we all? Mm -hmm. Who are you drawing today? Lee's big man. I draw him when I was 11 years old. I meet him up, laser beak man. He's a superhero. Has he got a villain with him today? Yeah, Peter Bartman. There's Tim in there somewhere. I think that's what it is. Laser Big Man's been around as long as, as we've known the Sharp family. Oh, Laser Big Man says. <laughs> We'd start getting birthday cards, and my kids just love them. They were just, you know, hysterical when they read some of the, the little comments that were inside them. We got so much interest from it, it just seemed to snowball and. Then all of a sudden, out of the blue one day, we got this application to the VSA Very Special Arts Festival in Washington, D.C. It sounded fantastic. You had to submit drawings and they had to go before a jury. Hi. Hello. I need to send this to Washington, D.C. OK. Please. It's huge. Absolutely huge. Applicants from around the world, um, only 200 chosen for the exhibition. Then I read it and it said, George W. Bush, the President of the United States, is the honorary chairman. Then it says, White House, you're going to the White House. And it didn't, no longer became an option of thinking about whether you're going or not. We were going. I don't know how we're going to get it all done. I think a lot of people assumed we wouldn't go because I just couldn't afford it. We booked in for haircuts. So the only way we could go was to get a mortgage on the house and I, some people thought I was mad. Is that moving on your feet at all? Yes, it is. It is? Not pulling too tight? No. no. I want Tim to feel the best he's ever felt in his life, like a superstar. I want him to feel not even like an equal, better than an equal. Oh, oh, look, you are so handsome. That is just beautiful. Look in the mirror, look at cool. I think it's, America's going to be excited. Yeah? Do you think everybody's going to love you? Yeah, they are. You're going to walk out carrying the flag for Australia. So when do you guys head away? No, next Thursday. Mm -hmm. Can't believe it. Can we ever get there? Judy is focused at the moment on Tim's future, and that's about all she's focused on. She wants a future for Tim. I'll go for the crocodile. I can't even bear the thought of him ending up doing some repetitive thing, and you know, separate from society and having no sense of fulfilment or enjoyment or satisfaction. But with Laser Big Man, there's a chance to make another life. We got a um, phone call saying that the uh, White House event is off. There is no White House event. And it was just quite simply said like that. 
and there'll be no President Bush because he's got to go to a meeting. Um, it's a bit of a blow. She certainly took it hard in the beginning. And she was worried about telling Tim as well because he was obviously looking forward to it, yeah. We're not going to the White House now. Why? Because they've cancelled it. What did they cancel it for? I had to remember that my point in going was for Tim's artwork and that opportunity was still there. I can't wait till I go to America and I'm excited about it. Laser Beak Man was one of my favorite characters. Tim Shaw, Tengalpa, Australia. He's someone who is heroic, who is in command of his universe, moving through it in a spirit of goodness, I guess. I really like your work. I've seen your postcards too, and your birthday yeah. cards. Yeah. Yeah. This is yours, right? Yeah. He painted this. He made a oh, Laser Beak Man. And what's your name? Kirsten. Kirsten, I'm Tim. Hi. It was your birthday. It was last month. What's the day? The 9th. 9th of May? Yes. What year? 1988. Oh, you're born on a Monday. Yeah, I was born on a Monday. Yeah. Only 16 and you've done this? Yes, I've done. I think it's very creative. I think it uh, shows a very keen imagination and a great sense of color and drama. And I think all that's in there. You look at the picture, for me anyway. I mean, that's the beauty of art. Somebody else may see something quite different. We're kicking off our fourth International VSA Arts Festival. Please join me in welcoming festival participants from around the world in a magnificent parade of flags. Bring them on. Australia! The Bahamas! Argentina! Canada! He enjoyed it and then he told me afterwards, he said, I, I did a good job. And I said, yes, you did, Tim. You did a very good job. And he said, um, I carried the Australian flag. He seemed to realise the significance of what he did, which I was really pleased because I wanted him to. And he'll remember that forever, too. Can't take it away from him. It has been a special privilege to meet the young artists who so generously share their extraordinary gifts with us. At the opening ceremony, Jean Kennedy Smith made a speech as the founder of VSA Arts. And enriched our lives. And we met her, and she walked up to Tim and she looked directly at him and she was interested and Tim said to her, are you Mrs Bush? <laughs> and she just laughed, she didn't uh, flinch. And this centre is, is named after Augusta. And they tried to explain that the building was named after her brother. JFK. This is JFK's sister. <laughs> and Tim said, who's your brother? <laughs> and he didn't know and they explained that. And it didn't matter in the least, she was so lovely. She was so lovely that I said, you've got to come home with me and I'll cook your roast lamb. She's come back full of confidence and, um, yeah, it's going to take, take on the world, I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've never been happier, never been happier. And, and I also couldn't have done it without my rock. Yeah. 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 And I am the luckiest mother in the world to have these two boys. And I'm so incredibly happy and I love you all. <laughs> But more importantly, it's the blossoming of Tim Sharp that thrills me the most. That there's a whole world out there that does accept him just the way he is. And it's kind of like nearly all my dreams are coming true. What I wanted for Tim is a possibility. Everybody's got a place in the world, and we've just about found Tim's, I think. Two thousand and four was the year that our lives changed, and they would never be the same again. Is that where you started your love of travel, going to Washington? 
Yes, that was the first one. Yeah, the Australian the Story Program, Ed. We all watched it together and we thought, well, that was really nice, but that's the end. Abraham Lincoln. That's the one. But as soon as it finished, the phone started and it didn't stop. We were inundated. I have galleries ringing up saying, can Tim have an exhibition here? The first exhibition I ever had was at Hands-On Art that used to be at South Bank back in 2005. There was this amazing explosion of Tim's work and creativity and the way he's expressing himself with his ideas. It was nothing like he was doing before. What's your favourite part? The big laser big man on the left? Oh, yes. Yeah, I like that one too, I think. One day we had an exhibition and there was this big fuss and people were surrounding someone. And it was Kate Blanchett, his most favourite actress ever. I met an Australian actress named Kate Blanchett. She's been in Lord of the Ring movies. That's my favourite movie. She said, will you come and show me your art? And so they walked around together. And she was laughing, and then she bought some. She got one, it's called Lays Big Man Tells the Wiggles to Shut Up. People were starting to share his work. There was starting to be discussion around it. He's this young guy with autism and he's a fantastic artist. And then we found out that he had this mum and she could really talk and was a great advocate for him. This today is about inspirational mothers and I'm so proud to welcome Judy to the stage. Thank you. We were invited to speak at a lunch. The main speaker was going to be Cathy Lett. It's a, a great honour for us to be here today. I really thought that would be the only talk I'd ever give. And I'd been carrying this big secret and I think it was just the time that I wanted to say something about it. On the 1st of February 1992, I escaped an extremely violent and abusive husband. I didn't actually tell them too much about what I suffered. It was a room full of women and I thought that they would understand in my marriage, I'd been cut off from family and friends. I had no one. I was 28 years of age when I got married and I thought that he was a kind and good man. But once the babies were born, he just couldn't stand that I gave more attention to the boys than I did to him. The psychological Violence, in, in many ways, was worse than the physical violence. And the sexual abuse was just horrific. And it stole my personality and it stole all the confidence I had. I knew I was in an incredibly dangerous situation. One day, he was walking up and down the house and sometimes he'd come back with the rifle. And then all of a sudden, he picked up the camera and he stood in the living room and he said, I'm going to take this photo because tonight you will die. So the boys will have a memory of the last time they were alive with their mother. The next day, he went to work and I went and found us a house to rent. I found a ad for a removalist and said, you need to be here at Saturday morning at 10 o'clock. He goes to work at nine. We've got one hour. That morning, Tim lost it. Like a complete breakdown. There was nothing I could ever do to console him. He had a row of toy trucks against the front door. They had to be moved so that the men could get in and out. And he was trying to put everything back. And it was heartbreaking to watch, to see poor little Timmy, so upset and so desperate for his world to stay the same. And I thought, oh, I, I can't do this. And I went and sat on the front step and I just said to the truck drivers, you can go now, it's not gonna happen. And they said to me, look, our mum was in the same boat. She got out. And we turned out just fine, you're going to be all right. And they just went in the house and took everything. If I ever wanted to find anyone again to be them, 
If they hadn't said to me what they said at that moment, I would not have left that day. I just would have given up. And the next time I probably would have been dead. So people just don't know what one kind word can do for somebody else. I'm so happy I've been on my own for 21 years. Nothing makes me happier than having my two boys. All the time that her husband was still alive, Judy was living with this cloak of fear. He passed away in December of 2019. Mum's always been good at commanding a room, but the evolution of her public speaking's um, been remarkable. There was a friend's birthday coming up and we had no money back then, so I decided we'd make a card. So Tim drew Laser Beakman on the front and I said to him, what would Laser Beakman say, Tim? Have a filthy, disgusting birthday. <laughs> <laughs> What I was noticing about Tim was his confidence. He's very self-possessed and very well-mannered, very engaging. Picking up chicks. <laughs> Autism is a large part of Tim, but this isn't his personality, and it's wonderful to see more of Tim developing like that. Mum and I are a good team. We are nice to each other. We are never mean to each other. We like hanging out. She's my mum and my best friend. She is beautiful and excellent. I love my mum. <laughs> All you need is love. I did a really good job. They stand up and clap for me. They were cheering for me. A lot of the things that I was led to believe were characteristics of autism, such as not wanting to travel, being terribly frightened of new things. Hasn't always been the case with Tim. He actually rises when he's taken out of his comfort zone and given some new challenges or gets to see new places. And that's also made me believe in myself a little bit more. Why is it your favourite? Oh, because I like it. It's and I could just see all this opportunity for Tim. And this one is for you. We first met Tim and Judy in 2013 when Tim had an exhibition of his artwork, Laser Big Man, at the Powerhouse. Nick and David are puppeteers and they had a theatre show on at the Powerhouse the same time as Tim's art exhibition. It's good to see you guys. Good to see you too, thank you. Tim developed a very quick connection with the boys where he was happy to hang with them and talk. It was lovely. That's the very first Laser Beak Man. Oh, wow. wow. How long ago was it? 21 years ago. Tim shared with us his back catalogue of work, like these hundreds of drawings from, you know, little scratchings on bits of sort of torn out exercise book all the way through to these phenomenal huge artworks. Is he also sometimes a bad guy as well? Yeah, he's Laser Big Man's enemy. So we thought that that was a really wonderful starting point to a collaboration with Tim where we could work with him to write a, a script or a story that he already had created. Is um, Laser Big Man in love with Evil Emily? She's not a uh, girlfriend? No, Mum. No. My job on the play, I'm a a writer of the play, Nick and David are the writers of the play. I miss you, Nick and David, and I love you. Yeah, I love you too. <laughs> Nick and David had been working overseas, and an opportunity came up to do the development in New York City. Tim and Judy flew over, and we worked with local puppeteers who ended up being in the production. The first morning, we walked into the room and they read the script and Tim took his place at the head of the table. This is the first time Tim's drawings were coming off the page alive. Tim was insistent that, in fact, laser beak men shouldn't speak. He does good through his actions, not through his words. Has anyone ever told you about the road to happiness? That meant that the music and the score that sat behind Laser Beak Man was able to be elevated to almost function as his voice. We had to approach Sam Cromack to compose for this because we just thought it was a match made in heaven. Tim 
loves a lot of classic 60s, 70s pop rock, um, same kind of music that I grew up on. He sings along, he dances, he asks if he can jam with us all the time. I love music. Music makes me happy. I love performing with them. I play keyboard and guitar. They play The Real Road, The Happiness Isn't Here. That's my favorite song from the play. I wanted to spend the rest of my life within that theater where Tim was always treated as an equal. It was beautiful. Oh, yeah. So the production had its world premiere as part of Brisbane Festival in 2017 and it had a wonderful reception. We received rave reviews, but certainly in terms of our vision for where it should go, did not stop at Brisbane. The one venue that Tim absolutely knew that the production must go to was the Sydney Opera House. So in true Tim style, aiming high, we went, let's do it. Do you want to just take a moment while we've got a sec now to just talk through what that dance is? And it took two years to create a national tour for the work. Tonight is opening night. We are all black sheep. And we are going to enjoy every single minute of it. Which one do you think you'd like to wear tonight? Ah, that one, please. We're just people from the suburbs. And here we are at the Opera House. Things like that don't happen to people like us. Oh, that will be good. I'm not crying. I'm not crying. I'm not crying. Oh, you look really good, Nick. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. Me, Mum and Sam went to see the opening night on the Lace Big Man puppet show. It was a boy with a beak on his face and a kindness in his heart. And the Rogerson families take our seats and all of a sudden you're overwhelmed. The lights, the art, the, the drones, that you are immersed in this visual experience. <laughs> and you were surrounded by Tim. It's really what it felt like. It was, it was, you were immersed in Tim's world. Citizens of Power City, remember me? Laser Beak Man is about a superhero who loses all his powers. It's through adversity that Laser Beak Man finds his true power, which is friendship. I see a lot of Tim in that. Puppet show is really great and people like it. What a ride. Come on, let's it is funny and I like to watch every performance because I like seeing them. It's my dream come true. This is in here. Now Tim's out in the world. Tim is not some young man with autism who doesn't have a voice and who doesn't have a community. We did it I hope. Judy and Tim understand how important this work is. And together we look to the future. It's very meaningful to a lot of people. A double shot of happiness. Oh, the real world. Next thing that Tim really wants and we're all working for is Laser Big Man the movie and the world tour of the play. There's a lot of progress being made on that, and I've been surprised with everything that's happened for Tim, and it would be silly of me to doubt that it won't happen. I think it's pretty well close. <laughs>